Now, if you're a photographer that wants to live paycheck by paycheck, fine, that's you. But if some of you wants to elevate themselves and become more richer uh, and preserve their wealth, then this video is for you. Now, I'm talking from my perspective, at least, you know. If you are not educated about finances and how money works, now is the best time to learn a little bit more about money because everything you learn about money, it's wrong. Now, the first thing that keeps photographers poor is trading their time for money. And I know, I know, some of you will tell me, man, but I do a lot of photography, I make a lot of money, I have a lot of photo shoots, my, my booking is full. Of course it's full, of course, because you have to trade your time for money. But you know what? The rich people, they do not trade their time for money. They make their money work for them. So the thing is, photographers have to learn how to not trade anymore their time for money. I mean, you can trade your time for money for a certain period of time because we have a limited time, you know. The most precious asset we have, it's time. And if you trade your time, you know, it will be gone soon. So I will say stop trading your time for money. That means you have to find ways to make your money work for you. The second thing that keeps photographers poor is because they live only on photography. Photography is not a predictable uh, income. So the most mistake photographers do is they rely only on photography and they live on photography. They have the mentality of hunt and eat and that's not good if you want to become richer and preserve your wealth. And yes, it's not about how much uh, money you make, it's about how much you keep. You need to have a predictable income. That means you have to get a real job, okay? So please, photography you should keep photography only for as, as a side hustle, not as your primary income. That's the best thing you can do, okay? So stop living only on photography and having this mentality of, you know, I'm hunting just to eat, okay? That's a bad, bad thing. If you don't want to be poor and if you want to get richer and richer, stop having this poor mentality because it starts with the mentality, you know? having this poor mentality that I'm hunting just to eat. The third thing is having one source of income. And this is related to the one we talked early, living only on photography. If you are living only on photography and you have only one source of income, you are doomed. You know, that's very, very bad. You know, if something happens, I mean, your boat, it's under the water. My advice to most photographers is get a real fucking job and keep photography as a side hustle. You know why? Because photography alone, it's not sustainable. So I don't care what you wanted to say to me. I don't care if you are having a lot of photo shoots and so on. You cannot predict your income. You can have three photo shoots this month and you can have zero photo shoots ne next month. So make sure you have at least two sources of income, your job and your side hustle. Now, the fourth thing is living beyond your means. What do I mean through that? If the neighbor bought a BMW, you'll buy a Ferrari or a Porsche, whatever. Maybe you can afford it to buy once, but if you cannot afford to buy five times that car, you should not fucking buy it. You know why? Because you just sabotage yourself and you can never become free and become financial free, you know? The whole key, the whole key of this journey as a photographer is that one day you will become financial free and you don't have to work anymore for money. So stop living beyond your means. I mean, you have to reduce your costs, your cost of living. If you have to live in a smaller place, live in a smaller place. If you have to drive a worse car or a, a less expensive car, buy an ex a less expensive car and so on and so on. If you need to wear uh, less fashionable clothes, at least for a period, please stop buying super expensive clothing. And uh, yeah, the list can go on. The fifth thing that keeps you poor as a photographer is buying crap. You know, we are all guilty about this. If you buy all kinds of stuff that you don't need in a house and 
your house is full of crap, it's time to get rid of them, okay? Sell them on the marketplace, but please get rid of them. In the first place, don't fucking buy them, okay? Because it will just make a hole into your pocket. Now, when you're buying a lot of crap, the thing is they go down in value and the thing is you cannot sell them right away. But if you still have crap in your house and if it does have any utility, get rid of them. Sell them, okay, or give them to charity. But please stop buying crap. Now, the next one, the sixth one, I know most of the photographers are related to this. <laughs> spending money on the latest gear. This is the stupid mistake most of the photographers do and they it seems they don't get it. That's why you're fucking poor and you'll remain poor forever. You know, being broke is one thing. Being broke is temporary, but being poor is for life. I mean, do you need the latest and the greatest version of the camera that's on the market right now? Do you need the latest and the greatest lens right now that's coming up with the 18 elements and the whatever, whatever, coating and stuff? You don't fucking need that, okay? I mean, I understand having good equipment. I do have also good equipment. I do have a Canon EOS R and I do have uh, lenses, good lenses, but I bought them secondhand, first of all, and I don't keep up with the Jones. I don't buy the latest and the greatest. Just buy a second hand. Always buy as you can second hand because you're going to save a lot of money. I mean, when you when you buy the newest and the greatest uh, equipment, uh, photography equipment, you will lose actually 25% the moment you bought that uh, camera or that lens. So be smart with your money. Spend your money wise. Spend your money so you can have an ROI of that money spent on your gear, okay? So what I will advise to you is to buy as much as you can secondhand. I mean, the technology, it's advanced right now. You can get a wrong camera or a bad camera or a bad lens right now, okay? I mean, you don't have to break the bank to have good gear and good... Uh, photography equipment, you know, good lenses, good cameras, and so on. So if you're going to the uh, second marketplace, you'll find there a lot of good equipment and uh, well-maintained. And uh, yeah, you don't have to spend a lot of money to have good equipment. So stop uh, spending thousands and thousands of dollars or euros on cameras and gear. It doesn't make any sense, okay? Yes, you can spend thousands and thousands of dollars on equipment or you can spend much lesser, a fraction of what most photographers spend to have good, decent equipment. And the rule is if you cannot buy it five times, that, that lens, that camera, that filter, that light, if you cannot buy it five times, you cannot fucking afford it, okay? So don't buy it. The seventh thing that keeps photographers poor is not saving money. If you have not developed this habit, this good habit of saving money, or let's say paying yourself first, and I really highly recommend you to read The, the Richest Man in Babylon. There's a very good book about this. To develop this habit of saving, you have to save at least 30 to 40% of that income, okay? That means you build this habit every time you get a shoot or you do a job or whatever, uh, you do a wedding or so, you have to pay yourself first. Doesn't matter what's happening. That's why I'm saying you need to have, first of all, you need to have a steady income like a job because you don't have to rely on photography. Photography should be as a side hustle, as an extra income, you know? And every time you get that paycheck, from your job or from the side hustle, you have to put aside at least 30 to 40%. So pay yourself first if you want to become more richer and to preserve your wealth. Now, the eighth thing that most photographers are poor, of course, it's not knowing what to do with the money. I mean, you can save a lot of money, but you cannot save your way to wealth. Most of us are not taught in school about what to do with the money. But the thing is, the money it's losing value. There's a quote by uh, Warren Buffett that say, 
If you don't learn how to make your money work for you, you will work all of your life. So after you make money, you save that money, you make sure you deploy that money into an asset class. Let's talk about what's an asset because I know most of you don't know. An asset is something that puts money into your pocket wherever you work or you don't. A liability, on the other hand, it's something that takes you money from your pocket, you know. Every time you buy a new lens or a new camera or a new light, it could be a liability if it doesn't make money. Now the question is what kind of type of assets should you invest in? Now the first asset class is real estate. It's one of the best investments you can do in your lifetime because you preserve your wealth and it's a wealth that you can transfer to your kids, grandkids and so on. And it's a, yeah, it's a wealth preservation. Uh, most of the billionaires and millionaires made their wealth through real estate. 90% of the millionaires and billionaires made their wealth um, through real estate. And real estate, it's appreciation. But the thing that you want the most to invest in real estate is because of the cash flow. Cash flow, it's king, baby. Cash flow, you know. And this is what I do. The second asset class, it's stocks. Stocks, uh, I mean paper assets, stocks, you invest in the stock market. Now in stocks, you can invest in different companies so you don't have to um, hustle yourself like a, a brick and mortar business. It's, it is much easier and m much uh, accessible than uh, a normal business. I mean, it's a bit riskier than real estate, but it's still going to produce you cash flow or appreciation in time. So uh, it depends on your risk tolerance, but stocks are also very good uh, asset class. Um, of course, you have to take in mind that you can win or lose, but if you're on a long run, then it doesn't matter because you're an investor, you're not a trader, you're not a day trader. So uh, yeah, stocks are a good start if you don't have enough money, like in real estate, you're gonna need a lot of money to start. But in stocks, you can actually start with 5, 10, 50, 100 euro. Now, the third asset class are commodities, which are also one of my favorite uh, asset class. Gold, silver, um, wheat, gas, electricity, wherever people really need in their life. Not wants, but needs. You know, whenever there is a crisis, all those commodities, they are going higher and higher in prices and then you can also ride with this my favorite are gold and silver i buy every month gold and silver because it's a hedge against inflation and i can protect myself in case something goes wrong or a bank may fail you know gold and silver they are money for more than five thousand years the fourth asset class is business business if you want to run a business you can do it of course but you're gonna need a lot of money but brick and mortar businesses like a pizza uh, restaurant or a coffee shop or a clothing store you know you name it uh, businesses is another asset class and of course you're gonna need a lot of money and uh, a lot of knowledge and a lot of resources human resources knowledge money and uh, know-how, of course, and uh, it's a little bit more riskier, but in the long run, I mean, when you also get on the fast track, uh, buying a business, don't start from zero, we're going to talk in another video about that, but businesses are also kind of a faster vehicle to then build your wealth by, of course, real estate, and commodities. So the whole idea of a business is to build wealth in the long run, like photography, for example, okay? You make money, you create a lot of value for people, then you take that money and reinvest a part of it in the business and then take the other part and invest in real assets. Now the fifth asset class, it's a Bitcoin or crypto, but especially Bitcoin uh, because, you know, we are living in a digital era and um, I think this will become like a people's kind of money. But uh, yeah, um, Bitcoin, it's another asset class right now uh, where you can invest. It's more of a speculative um, side, but uh, depends, of course, on your risk tolerance. 
for for example, for myself, I wouldn't invest more than five percent. Now, the way I like to invest my money is like fifty percent liquid and fifty percent non-liquid. That means fifty percent goes to real estate, and fifty percent goes to liquid assets. Now, for the beginning, I would suggest you to invest much more into real estate and to uh, assets that produce you cash flow, so you can get out of the rat race. Uh, that means real estate, uh, a business or stocks, depends which uh, you consider to be the best for you. But you have to do your due diligence, your researches um, to make sure that you, you take the right decision. So guys, the only reason I do this video is to help improve you uh, with your financial education and uh, to make you better with your your money with your income and what you do with your income you know it's very important that you understand all these things and learn about financial education and educate yourself about financing and money because that way you will become financial free so guys i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please subscribe to my channel hit the bell notification or hit the like button or please leave me a comment down below let me know what is your thoughts and if you have something to add to my points here. And I will see you in the next one.